All right, guys, it's finally time for a houseboat update. All right, guys, so you all been asking for a houseboat update and I've got one for you today. I've got four things that we'll show you. So one is what happened with our fiberglass and epoxy order. Two, we've got some fiberglass strength testing that we've done to figure out the best way to get this boat back together. Three, some electronic systems that we've been working on. And then four, I've got some renders we've done of the full model of the boat what we think it might look like when it's done. So in the past couple episodes of the houseboat restoration, you saw we brought the boat here, we took the interior out, we took the engines out, and then of course, we cut the thing in half so that we can put another piece of a boat in here, make the boat a bit bigger. But then this happened. Because of these issues, it has taken us a while to get the stuff we actually need to start this project, but we finally got it. Okay, so the first batch of epoxy resin showed up. Somehow, this is over $5,000 of epoxy and fiberglass. Because of the supply chain issues, the company that makes this epoxy hasn't been able to get the chemicals they need. They called me up and said, we can get some more expensive premium chemicals to make this epoxy, or you can just keep waiting for the original formula. So I said, just give me the new stuff, we'll try it out. Since we're not a commercial building, we don't have a forklift here, they had to send it to me in just gallon like milk jugs. So I also ordered two football field rolls of fiberglass, so 200 yards. I think that should be enough to get us started, I hope. we go we've got 54 gallons of epoxy now there's 40 gallons of the resin 14 gallons of hardener and then like I said we've got 200 yards of fiberglass to start with so 100 yards of the 1708 biaxial this is the really thick cloth that we're gonna use when we're doing the stringers and then we've got 100 yards of just 10 ounce cloth so this is good for not really structural stuff but covering panels, things like that. I also picked up some different fillers, materials like that to try out. So for one, this is a fairing compound I've never used before. So this is good, apparently, when you've got imperfections on the side of a boat, you're trying to fill them in, you can use this stuff. It's kind of weird. It looks like, uh, like baking soda and maybe ground up cardboard box, I don't know. We'll see how that works out. This is 3M Glass Bubbles. And this is a filler that they say is really good to use for sanding. It sands really easy. So we'll try and find out. But apparently it feels really weird. It's like, uh, man, I don't even know. But apparently they're glass spheres. And then uh, I've also got a lifetime supply of packing peanuts from all of this. So let me know if you'll need any of those. Okay, next I wanna to talk to you guys about the fiberglass strength testing that we did. We actually did this before we even cut the boat in half. The idea was we wanna find out the strongest way to glue this new piece of boat in the middle and not have the thing fall apart like the Titanic. What we did is we took a piece of the old boat hull, we put it in the CNC router, and we milled it flat as we can so that all the test pieces were pretty close to the same thickness to make it fair. And we ended up testing something like 20 different pieces, different types of ways to attach it together and averaged it out. I'm gonna take you guys out to the boat and show you the results. So when we put that other piece of boat in, the worst way to do it would be to butt that piece of hull up and then just fiberglass over the top. That's gonna to be the weakest way to do it. So when you're welding pieces of metal that are butted up against each other, you always wanna bevel, you know, you grind out an area on each piece 
and you weld over that. That's a strong way to do it. So what boat builders recommend is a 12 to one bevel when you're butting up fiberglass next to each other and doing repairs. What that means, 12 to one, if the hull is one inch thick, which this is, you would bevel 12 inches back. And you do that on the other piece right here. So you've got two feet that you're fiberglassing over. That is one type of test that we did. So here is a bevel. So imagine these two pieces of boat coming together. We did a bevel on each side and fiberglassed over the top. But you can see we did not do any beveling on the bottom side. The other way we could do it is a bevel on both sides of the hull. So that's what this test piece is. So that would mean we bevel the top side of the hull and then we've got to get under here with the grinders and bevel the bottom side of the hull. Here's what the test results were. Here's a piece of the factory 1977 hull and it's uncut. So this was our control piece. These broke at an average of 169 pounds of force right here to get these to crack. So that's our control piece, 169 pounds. Okay, for the tests where we did a bevel, but only on one side, these broke at an average of 106 pounds. So 169 for the factory hull, 106 for this. So this is weaker than the factory hull. Starting to delaminate. But where we did a bevel on both sides and we fiberglassed on the top side of the hull and the bottom side, these pieces broke at an average of 352 pounds. Woo! Damn. So 352 versus 169 versus 106. So this, cutting it in half, fiberglassing it back together, this is twice as strong as the factory piece somehow. Okay, so am I saying that if we cut the boat in half and glue it back together, it's gonna be stronger than it was from the factory? Not necessarily. This is one type of test. It's a three-point load test, pushing down in the middle. Nate is a mechanical engineer. He was yelling at me because we're not doing a cyclical load test where we put in a machine, bend it till it breaks. Only so much we can do here at the house. It does show that epoxy is very strong at mechanically bonding things together. And it's kind of given us the confidence to know that we can put another piece of boat in the middle here, glue everything back together, and it's gonna be really strong. Okay, let's talk about the electronic stuff we've been working on. So we're gonna make the boat a smart boat, right? So everybody's doing smart homes these days to control lights and things like that. We're gonna make our own lighting system controlled by these screens. And then we're also working on actual vessel control systems. Instead of using cables for the transmissions and the throttles and hydraulics for the steering, we're gonna make it all electronic. So let me take you back out to the boat real quick. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so here's how the lighting worked on this boat. So up here, all the DC lights, you could control at the helm here. So you had your panel lights, your docking lights, spotlight, anchor light, etc. DC lights all here. But for the AC lighting, it's kind of all over the place. So for the downstairs room, you got a switch right here. For the bathroom, the switches were inside the bathroom. So that was fine. For the Lights in the back of the boat, switches were only back there at the very back. Kitchen lights were here in the kitchen. And then for a couple things, there were no switches. You had to come in here to the breaker panel, turn it on with the breaker, which is dumb. So let's talk about the actual controls for the steering, transmissions, throttle of the houseboat. So back in the day, everything's cable based. So here are the two transmission controls. When you move these, it moves a cable and that's a you know, 50 something plus foot cable goes all the way back to the engine room back there. Okay, same thing with the throttles. It's all mechanical. So you're moving these, it's moving cables. The cables go to the engine room. There's also another set of cables that go up this tube to the flybridge controls at the top. 
So when you're moving this, you're moving cables in two different places. They're really tough to move, even when they're brand new cables. The steering, all hydraulic. So let me get you behind here real quick, see if we can see. It's kind of tough to see in there, but there's the hydraulic pump for the steering. And you can see the copper lines coming off of this thing. Every time you're spinning this wheel, what it's doing, pumping hydraulic fluid, again, upstairs to the top controls, but then pumping it through copper lines all the way to the back of the boat. And back here in the engine room, here is where those hydraulic lines terminate into the steering ram. The steering ram here, that's what actually turns the rudders on the boat. So all these controls, the hydraulic, the cables, run through outside edges of the boat here. So you can see we actually cut through, when we cut the boat in half, cut through all the cables. Here's the hydraulic steering lines here that are copper. So that stuff all works. It's just a pain. It's a lot to maintain. The hydraulic stuff would leak. Hopefully that makes sense why we're gonna switch to electronic controls for everything. Let me bring you guys in here. Do a little quick demo real quick. Okay, so this is an example with the LED strip lighting. And here's our screen here. Looks pretty good, right? So they're touch screen. We can put these all over the boat connect them together so we can control lights from anywhere on the boat, up at the helm, in the little bedrooms even, the downstairs bedroom, anywhere. So this is a kitchen cabinet lighting, right? So we turn it on, We've got a slider here for different colors, We've got a slider for how dim or bright it should be. And we can do that for all kinds of lights across the boat. Of course, nothing else is hooked up right now. But, and then I can do multiple pages too, so I can switch to exterior lighting. We can do a, like a dim version for when we're going at night. I can hit one button, maybe upstairs, have a kind of night mode where all the lights go to red upstairs. So we've got good night vision. All the home automation stuff nowadays is wireless based and it works pretty good. I've got the Philips Hue system in the house but there's about 5% of the time where you go and you hit a button to turn a light on and nothing happens, it just doesn't work. With this system, it's all wired, there's no wireless, and it's our code that we wrote. So the only people we can blame if we hit a button and a light doesn't turn on is us, because we made it. For actually driving the boat, we're gonna go fly by wire for that. So instead of the old cables and hydraulics, built a little test set up here, and we've started testing out electronic control. So linear actuators, stepper motors, servo motors. So instead of using cables, we're gonna use electronic signals and some code that we write. So when we put a transmission into gear, instead of a 50 something foot long cable, we're gonna send an electrical signal to the back of the boat and tell the transmission to go into gear. So you go into forward. Another benefit to getting away from cables and hydraulics would be multiple driving stations. So right now, you can drive the boat from the bridge area here and up at the top on the flybridge because the cables are connected, the hydraulics are connected. But what I want to do is be able to drive from the back of the boat, 55 feet away. If we go to electronic controls that we design, we can have controls wherever we want on the boat. So we can have uh, some super yachts now, they have a remote control and a cable you can plug into the back of the boat. So you can be on the back of the boat, plug in, and you've got a little mini set of controls. So when you're backing into the dock, you can stand right on the back of the boat and you won't hit the dock. The last thing I wanna do is talk to you guys about the renders that we've done of the houseboat. So what we had to do is draw this in the computer to make sure that piece of boat would fit in the middle of this one. To do that, I had to get measurements along the entire hull, 200 places, so I could draw an accurate shape of the hull in the computer. What I did is take a laser range finder like this, come along 200 points along the hull with the laser, get a measurement, all right, down to the 30 seconds of an inch. Wrote every single measurement down for the entire length of the hull. And also went through the entire boat and drew out every window, every door, the angles of the windows, everything I needed to be able to draw this entire boat in the computer. 
And then I spent probably a month drawing the entire boat up. So now since everything's drawn in SketchUp, we can move furniture around, cabinets, different rooms, whatever you wanna do so we can get different ideas. You can even put the Oculus VR headset on and walk around the boat in VR. So you can kind of feel like you're in the boat. You can even pick things up, move them around so you can try different furniture out, see what it would look like. All right, so let me show you the first renderings we've got. Tell me what you guys think. If we start here on the outside, I've drawn the boat up a couple different ways with the siding covering the top railings and then with it not covering side railings. I'm not sure which looks better. I'm just playing with different options here. We're gonna build a covered awning above the top deck that we can mount solar panels on. So that'll give us some shade on the top deck and then we can mount, I don't know, maybe nine, 10, 12 solar panels so that we can stop using the generator so much. So you guys know gas prices are getting ridiculous and we would burn a gallon or so an hour out of that generator. So when you sleep overnight for a weekend running that air conditioner, you're burning 20, 30, 40, 50 gallons of gas just for the generator. That's ridiculous. So solar panels and a battery bank, it's gonna be a must so we can stop relying on fuel so much. Here at the back of the boat, we've got our swim deck. I think we're gonna build a fiberglass one that hangs off the back so we can have some extra storage so we can put our anchor, extra fenders, things like that back here. If we go to the side, so the original boat, since we're adding the extra section in here, I'll show you guys what that buys us on the interior space. So if I hide the side walls, you can really see, we've got the living room, kind of how it was, with a couple couches, places for people to sit, but then we can add an extra section here with the bedrooms, and we can do two different beds. I think four people could sleep in here comfortably. It's seven feet long. We've got our bathroom over here that can be a little bit bigger, the shower, and I don't have it drawn in yet, but up here in the bow is the original bedroom. We're still gonna keep that, so that'll be the kind of master bedroom of the boat. If I zoom in here into the bedroom, you could have a small TV for the bottom bunk and one up on the top bunk, and then if we split the beds, each bunk would get some of the window. So whether you're on the top bunk or the bottom bunk, you could see out the window and get some natural light in. So I think that would be good. And then if I go to this top view, you can really see that extra seven feet gets us another seven feet of kitchen. So we can get a full size fridge in here, some storage cabinets, more kitchen space. And then we can have our L bar with some stools for people to sit at. So I know seven feet sounds like not a lot of space for this much work, but when the boat's only 43 feet long when you're adding seven feet that's a lot of extra space all right guys so i'm not an interior designer i'm just making this up as i go along if you've got any good ideas let me know in the comments or if you've seen any other channels where they're restoring a houseboat let me know in the comments i like to watch that stuff maybe i'll get some good ideas from it all right guys so sorry it took so long to get an update out you guys have been asking for it and we have not been delivering so i apologize that's probably where half of you subscribed from is one of the houseboat videos so we'll try and get them out more often Y'all let us know in the comments if there's more stuff you wanna see as we build the houseboat, and we'll see you guys on the next video.